Sir, we are live on YouTube now. Uh, Jugade sir, you can stop uh, sharing the screen, and okay. Tiwari sir can start the program. Okay, sir. Shall I start, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, respected uh, Dr. Panikar sir, IQAC coordinator, then very respected uh, Dafre sir, head department of chemistry. Then our special guest, Dr. Ravin Jugade, sir, who would be delivering the guest lecture on instrumentation in analytical chemistry. I welcome, sir, on behalf of the organizing committee. Now, let us uh, have some brief uh, introduction of Dr. Jugade, sir. Dr. Jugade, sir, presently working as professor in analytical chemistry, department of chemistry. RTM Nagpur, University Nagpur. Sir had an illustrious career as a student. Uh, sir uh, has completed PhD in 2004 from uh, uh, Nagpur University. Uh, specialization at PG is uh, analytical chemistry. Sir has also qualified for net examination for lectureship in 1998, qualified state eligibility test set of Maharashtra state for lectureship in 1998. Then various uh, research projects have also been awarded by UGC and RTM Nagpur University. Sir is, uh, Jugade sir is uh, recognized uh, research guide of RTM Nagpur University. Uh, four research students have completed a PhD under supervision of Jugade sir. Sir has completed 35 uh, MSc research projects. Apart from that, uh, uh, one student is also working for postdoctoral research. Many uh, administrative responsibilities are also held, the prominent uh, being the member of Board of Studies in Chemistry at the Bajaj College of Science, Vardha. Mm -hmm. Sir has published scores of research publications in reputed international and national journals. Apart from that, Sir has also presented papers at national and international conferences. Apart from that, numerous books have also been authored by Dr. Jugade sir. And of course, Jugade sir is uh, very popular among the student community in RTM Nagpur University region. Apart from that, several articles were published in newspapers. Uh, Jugade sir is also life members of uh, many academic and uh, chemistry bodies, the prominent being the member of Indian Council of Chemists, then uh, life member of Indian Association of Chemistry Teachers, life member of Indian Society of Analytical Scientists. Numerous awards have also been awarded to Dr. Jugade sir, Science Academy's research, research fellowship from 2nd May, to 27th June 2012 at National Chemical Laboratories, Pune. Dr. Jugade sir was also awarded with Gunwant Sikshan Award by Vidya Sikshan Prasarak Mandal Nagpur. Also awarded with Sikshan Award by Sansta Tulsi Das Rashtriya Sahitya Sansad, New Delhi on 2011. Then I will hand over the proceedings to Dr. Dafre, sir. Dafre, sir. Thank you, Dr. G. B. Tiwari, sir. 
Thank you, sir. Good morning to one and all uh, for being with us. Uh, principal of our college, Dr. Vikas Dhomne, sir, uh, as he's been uh, busy in some administrative uh, communications, he's not uh, able to join with us. My friend, IQC coordinator, head, Department of English, Dr. Tartik Panikar. Uh, today's resource person, Dr. Jugadesar, who is a very close friend of mine. Uh, all heads of the department, of science faculty, all my teacher colleagues, and my lovely dear students. Uh, the day uh, today become because uh, I, I would like just to apprise all of you that this guest picture of Dr. Jugade, sir, is dedicated in memories of Dr. S. D. Borkar. Uh, because uh, it was his desire that we should have one lecture of Dr. Jugade, sir, for our students to uh, make available them a good platform for uh, what instrumentation generally use at undergraduate level and what type of instrumentation should are generally used in the higher education, particularly for postgraduate chemistry. And Dr. Jugade is very much instrumental from long back in this field. And uh, he, he is a prominent figure in Nagpur University. As far as students are concerned, undergraduate, I think 90% uh, of the students, uh, they know Dr. Jugade, sir. But today, my dear student, you are fortunate enough to see him on screen uh, because many of the students, they become graduate in chemistry by taking the uh, a very huge support of Dr. Jugade sir's books because these books are not only used by the student, but these books are also used by the teacher faculty also, sir. And uh, uh, we are planning to have this uh, uh, lecture uh, as a part of uh, star college scheme because our college uh, has granted a star college scheme sir from last year from 1920 21 uh, it's onward it's carrying on because of the pandemic we, we are not able to carry out many of the activities but still in the last year we have conducted one national conference and so many activities we tried to conduct in last year on, on the uh, on platforms. So this year we begin with your lecture and we have planned 15 to 20 guest lectures for the session of 21 and 22 under STAR College Scheme. Uh, it's a part of very fortunate under this scheme our three departments will flourish with the instrument because botany, zoology and chemistry, these three departments have got 10 lakhs rupees for instrumentation. Total 30 lakhs uh, was granted by Government of India under Star College Scheme, which is controlled by Department of Biotechnology, New Delhi. Uh, I, I would like to inform our student that beside the uh, practicals which have been incorporated in this uh, Nagpur University syllabus, we are, we are conducting this year some extra practicals which are not given in the syllabus. And that's Practical will cover the use and the knowledge of new instruments which we have never seen in the college at uh, undergraduate level. So, with this, uh, my few words, I would like to put an end. I must thanks to Dr. Vikas Dhumne, sir, our principal, the coordinator of IQSC, Dr. Karthik Panikar, all my heads of the Department of Science faculty, my dear students, and Professor Dr. Jugade, sir, within a one phone for a single call, he accepted my invitation and my request for being with us, my student. Okay, thank you, sir. Dr. Tiwari. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can carry on. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would uh, now I would uh, request Dr. Jugade sir to deliver his presentation on instrumentation in analytical chemistry. 
जुगादे सर प्लीज Yes, sir. We can see your screen, sir. Yeah, uh, just a minute, huh? is the screen visible sir clearly yeah yeah now it is full screen sir no issues please continue okay uh so in the very beginning i thank organizers of this particular guest lecture the principal dr domne and his entire team including the iqc coordinator the head department of chemistry uh dr dafre sir So, Tiwari sir, in the very beginning, I thank you all, and for giving me this particular opportunity to interact with your students. Always, it is a, a great pleasure for me to interact with the students. Unfortunately, for two years or for last two years, we are not in a condition to have a physical interaction with the students. But I take this particular opportunity to interact. with the students of jm patel college bandara i congratulate congratulate the teaching fraternity as well as the students of jm patel college bandara for getting this star college grants from dbt the topic which has been uh, given to me by dr sham dafre is instrumentation in analytical chemistry now if we look at this topic it is a fascinating topic because always any student working in chemistry or physics he has got passion for what is called as instrumentation working on the classical methods is always less liked by the students as compared to the working on the instruments so it is actually a topic of students interest however there are certain problems because the topic given is instrumentation in analytical chemistry and i think the time given or time allotted to me by the organizers is around 45 minutes now uh, you can imagine a situation where thousands and thousands of equipments are there in analytical chemistry being used by lot of researchers by regular students at different levels starting from 11 12th to post graduation research and post doctorals and at scientific levels so it's a huge field or huge ocean of instrumentation and in this ocean the topic which is given to me is a ocean and the time which is given to me is just like a single droplet which is 45 minutes so if uh, what i thought is instead of discussing the instrumentation and just telling that this is the instrument this is the instrument this is the instrument what i have done here is i have put the topic or slightly modified the topic with this particular concept of instrumentation in analytical chemistry a logical approach on this what is this logical approach i will try to explain see any analytical instrument is developed with certain logic and i am going to discuss what is the logic in using particular instrument with a few examples uh if you give me opportunities uh, in future i will discuss some of them in details but today's lecture is just a glimpse of what is the logic of using analytical instruments that is what i will be confining to because in 45 minutes it is not possible to explain all the instruments so with a few examples which are related to our bsc curriculum and using those instruments i will be trying to explain what is the logic of the instruments let us start with this i will give you a few seconds to read this slide carefully
this is a person with a gun in hand and he is saying don't move i will fill you full of 98% lead 1% antimony 0.75% silver 200 parts per million nickel trace amounts of cobalt and other components below their respective detection limits so it means that he is basically a chemistry person and most probably analytical chemistry person with a gun in hand and what he is telling is the composition of the bullet the person who is standing in front of him is another analytical chemist so he is asking wait a minute are those values certified is a question so this analytical chemist is not bothered about his life but he is bothered about the composition what is told to him is it a true reliable reproducible certified composition so who is going to certify this type of composition of the bullet so that is being certified by an analytical chemist and that's where the role of analytical chemistry comes into picture so what is the role of analytical chemist and what is the importance of analysis we will try to understand in a few slides okay when i say analysis what is meant by analysis or what is meant by the word analysis analysis is something like determination something like detection and the word analysis comes with the concept of what is called as a sample now as a analytical chemist anything which comes to me will be called as a sample and this sample is subjected to analysis to determine certain species present in the sample and that certain species is called as analyte so basically analyte is that component of the sample which we want to analyze and whatever are the remaining parts of the sample they come under a word called as a matrix so in other words we can say that this sample is a composition of analyte plus matrix now this analyte is a species in which we are interested in or we want to determine for example if i have a sample or water sample and i want to determine copper present in the water sample then water becomes my sample and copper becomes my analyte whatever are the other fractions in the sample they come under what is called as the matrix so all the things except copper will be matrix so the role of analytical chemist is to determine the analyte in the sample in the presence of a matrix and this matrix is a interfering substance it always interferes in the analysis of the analyte okay now what is this sample this sample can be anything anything which comes to me it can be a bottle a bottle of water it can be a blood sample it can be a urine sample it can be a a rock sample it can be a soil sample so it can be anything from a small drop of blood to a big river or even a sea so anything which is under analysis will be called as a sample and this sample comes to me with two questions what is present in the sample which is called as the qualitative type of analysis and how much is present in a sample is called as a quantitative analysis so any sample comes to me with either of these two questions what is present in the sample and how much of a particular component is present in the sample so answers to these come under what is called as a qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis okay now when any sample comes to me for example if you see this figure he is probably uh, professor jugade who is a confused professor and he has been given a sample suppose some water sample is there and some analysis is to be carried out now the very first question comes into my mind as a an analytical chemist is what is the technique available for the analysis a simple example i can tell if i have a water sample and i want to determine copper present in this sample the very first question is what are the available techniques with me so what are the available techniques so for that i go to literature and in literature i get the technique of determination of copper but my problem is not solved why the problem is not solved 
because when i go to literature i have around 15 different techniques for determination of copper so my problem instead of getting solved gets aggravated or gets increased reason our i have to now select a proper technique among these five techniques so selection of the analytical technique is the first job of an analytical chemist now how to select the analytical technique the selection is based on certain criteria the very first criteria is the, what is the accuracy required now what is the accuracy required how much accurate you want to be with the true value or true concentration of a particular species and this accuracy is the sign or it is the uh, what do you call as it is the indication of the reliability of the method more accurate is the result more is the result reliable secondly what is the required precision precision is an indication of reproducibility of the result because if i carry out a analysis five times i should get exactly five identical uh, results so that is called as a precision third parameter is what is the detection limit of the technique now detection limit is the ability to detect the low concentrations it is the minimum detectable concentration so if my method has a detection limit of 0.1 molar it means that i cannot go below 0.1 molar so what is the required detection limit that is another aspect of parameter or another parameter under consideration next is what is the sensitivity of the technique required for this particular analysis of copper in the given sample next so this sensitivity is nothing but the ability to distinguish between two close concentrations if you have very close concentrations and if you are able to distinguish between them by using you by using your technique then that technique is called as a sensitive technique and of course apart from all these parameters probably the most important and governing part of our parameter is the cost which is involved in the analysis now if you are getting 10 lakh rupees from dbt for instrumentation then the cost is not a problem at all but still is it required i have 10 different methods in the city now what are the available analytical techniques we will see so we will classify the available analytical techniques with what is called as the classic instrumental methods of analysis i will try to explain this classical and instrumental methods of analysis the classical methods of analysis they are based on the chemical properties of the analyte which is present in the sample while the instrumental methods of analysis are based on physical properties of the analyte which are present in the sample now when i say classical methods they are further classified as volumetric methods of analysis and gravimetric methods of analysis volumetry is nothing but your titrations gravimetry is determination of mass uh, uh, sir is is it clearly audible and visible yes sir yes uh, is there any uh, no no difficulty at all no no please carry on okay okay thank you yes thank you okay so now come to what is the second part of the instrumental methods of analysis and they are based on not the chemical properties but the physical properties of the analyte let us try to understand what is fundamental difference between these two classical and instrumental methods for example i want to determine concentration of hcl present in the solution i titrate it with some standard naoh solution so what i am doing is i am carrying out a titration now it is a chemical property of hcl to react with naoh so the titration or volumetry is a type of technique which is based on chemical property and so it comes under what is called as the classical method of analysis on the other hand if we see the instrumental methods the instrumental methods as i have told it is based on the 
physical properties of the analyte for example some of them are classified as optical methods which are based on optical properties then chromatographic methods which are based on the separation between the mobile phase and stationary phase it is based on nurse distribution law or partition coefficient which is a physical property of the analyte radio chemical methods like neutron activation analysis and isotope dilution analysis they come under nuclear techniques again physical property of analyte and fourth are the electrochemical methods of analysis like potentiometry conductometry voltammetry they come under electrochemical methods of analysis and based on the electrical properties of analyte they are also based on the physical properties so the work which has been assigned to me is to cover the entire instrumental methods of analysis within 45 minutes and i have already used my 10 to 15 minutes introducing what is analytical chemistry so in order to cover this topic i will be just talking about two important aspects which are in your bsc curriculum first are the optical methods calorimetry spectrophotometry and second are electrochemical methods which are potentiometry conductometry and since my job is to tell you about instruments i will be discussing what is the logic to develop a instrument and what is the fundamental principle of that instrument that is what i will be talking today okay so now let us start with what is optical method of analysis now as the word is indicating optical means it has something to do with light something to do with eyes okay i take a simple example i have copper sulfate solution having two different concentrations 0.1 molar and 0.2 molar so two different concentrations copper sulfate solutions are there in two different test tubes test tube number 1 and test tube number 2 a question is asked to you which is 0.1 molar and which is 0.2 molar as soon as you look at these two test tubes you can immediately tell which is 0.1 molar and which is 0.2 molar as soon as the question is asked you are very happy with the question because you know the answer what is the answer answer is tube number 1 is 0.1 molar and tube number 2 is 0.2 molar how did you come to this conclusion the reason is you can see the color difference the intensity of the color is different in two solutions and so from the intensity you can say that the concentration is more where the intensity of the color is more so what is your conclusion the intensity of the color is directly proportional to concentration this is a simple logic as soon as you see these test tubes and on the basis of this logic which is known to us for long time you have identified which is 0.1 molar and which is 0.2 molar so you are happy right again i give you two test tubes again similar test tube number 1 and test tube number 2 but now the concentration one concentration is 0.1 molar and second concentration is 0.11 molar and again the question is same which is 0.1 molar and which is 0.11 molar now when you look at the test tubes the you will have to observe these test tubes very carefully and see which of them is 0.1 and which is again 0.11 if you observe them carefully you will feel, again will be able to identify that number 2 test tube number 2 is 0.1 molar and test tube number 1 is 0.11 molar again there is a slight difference in the color intensity so again you are happy that you have identified 0.1 and 0.11 molar okay further we move ahead i again give you two test tubes but now the concentrations are 0.1 molar and 0.101 molar now the concentrations difference between the concentration i am continuously decreasing i started with 0.1 0.2 then i went to 0.1 and 0.11 and now i have come to concentration 0.1 and 0.101 and my reaction is something like this as a student if i ask you which of them is 0.1 and which of them is 0.101 then there is a problem and it's not possible for us to identify which is 0.1 and which is 0.11 so in order to identify this or 
since I am not able to identify it, the question is my eyes are not that sensitive to identify. So it means that it should be my conclusion in order to identify which is point one and which is point one zero one, replace the eyes and replace the eyes with instrument. So it is the work of the eyes has been substituted by the work of the instrument. So what is the need of the instrument? This is what I have tried to explain you. What is the need for instrumentation in analytical chemistry? So I hope that you have understood what is the need of the instrument. What are the requirements? Why we need an instrument? First, to get accurate result. Second, to get reproducible result. If I carry out analysis 10 times, I will get identical observations. To get sensitive detection, to distinguish between very close concentrations and to detect very low concentration where our eyes fell. So all these have been covered by the instrument and so there is a requirement of instrumentation in analytical chemistry. I hope I am very clear in whatever I have told till now. Now we come to one of the technique which I want to tell you or discuss the instrumentation and how the instrumentation develops. Coming to the first technique which is colorimetry or the instrumentation which is called as colorimeter or spectrophotometry involving an instrument called as spectrophotometer. Okay, now it is based on a principle called as Beer's law. Now some of you who are in BSc final year uh, must have heard about this Beer's law. I will just go through the law and I will tell you how the instrument is based on this particular law can be developed. Okay, what this law states, I will just read through this. When a beam of monochromatic radiation passes through a homogeneous transparent solution, the decrease in intensity with respect to thickness is directly proportional to intensity of incident radiation and concentration of the solution. So this is a statement. So as a student, what we do, we mug up the statement like anything. When a beam of monochromatic radiation passes through a homogeneous transparent solution, the decrease in intensity with respect to thickness is directly proportional to intensity of inten the incident radiation and concentration of the solution. So we have read that. So when you, once you mug it up, we will try to understand the meaning of each and every terminology and we will see how the instrument can be developed based on the law or based on each and every word of the law. The very first word of importance is monochromatic radiation. And what is meant by a monochromatic radiation? The question is when a beam of monochromatic radiation, now as the word is in mono means one, chroma means color. So single color radiation is a monochromatic radiation. In scientific words, this is a radiation of single wavelength and we know that wavelength is reported by lambda or denoted by lambda. So it is the wavelength or single wavelength radiation. So basically when I say monochromatic radiation, I am interested in a radiation having a single wavelength. Now my question is I want to develop an instrument. So I want an instrument which will give me monochromatic radiation. Now for monochromatic radiation, we know that whatever is the source of light, the source of light is, we are talking about a visible region. The visible light is generally obtained from the tungsten lamp or a mercury vapor lamp. And the radiation coming from mercury vapor lamp or tungsten lamp is a polychromatic radiation covering a wide range of radiation or wide range of wavelength from around 400 nanometer to around 750 nanometer. This is the entire visible region of the spectrum. So the radiation coming from the lamp is polychromatic radiation because it contains a lot of radiations or a lot of different wavelengths. Now, I want to have a monochromatic radiation. It means that I will have to select a particular wavelength among them and that can be done by using an instrument called as a monochromator. 
what is a monochromator what does it do the monochromator like prism has got a tendency of dispersion of light and when you disperse this white light it disperses into different colors depending on their wavelengths so red orange yellow green all these radiations will get dispersed at different angles and if i put a slit in between so i can select a desired wavelength by putting a slit in the path of this radiation and adjusting the slit so as to get the desired radiation or radiation of desired wavelength so how to get monochromatic radiation by using a monochromator and what are the possible monochromators the first monochromator which was used is a colored filter it is just like a colored glass through which if you have a red colored glass it will allow only red radiation if you have a green colored glass it will allow only green radiation and so on second is a prism that is what we have seen here and third is a grating so all the three act as a monochromators and the function of monochromator is to get desired wavelength from the polychromatic or multi wavelength light okay this is the first component of the instrument okay so there will be a source of radiation over here the radiation coming from here is dispersed into different wavelengths and we are selecting a particular wavelength okay this is all about the first component okay we will move ahead the second part of this it says that this radiation passes through homogeneous transparent medium so what i want i want a homogeneous transparent solution so how to get a homogeneous solution homogeneous means it should not contain any particles and it should be transparent it should not be opaque so this can be achieved by taking the solution in a transparent cell or it is called as a cuvette so this is a cuvette in which you are taking a sample solution and you are allowing the radiation to pass through this now this is a monochromatic radiation which is coming from the filter or prism or grating and you are allowing it pa to pass through the solution now when it passes through the homogeneous transparent solution what happens next next what happens is the after using the sample cell the decrease in intensity so what is happening is you can see the intensity on left hand side it is more intense when it passes through the solution the intensity decreases the decrease in intensity with respect to thickness is directly proportional to it is directly proportional to intensity of the incident radiation so decrease in intensity depends on intensity of the incident radiation initial intensity kitni hai इसके ऊपर डिपेंड करेगा कितनी डिक्रीज होगी एंड सेकेंडली इट विल ऑल्सो डिपेंड ऑन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द सोल्यूशन इट विल ऑल्सो डिपेंड हाउ मच विल बी डिक्रीज विल बी गवर्न बाय द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द सोल्यूशन सो इट मीन्स दैट देर आर टू फैक्टर्स विच आर गवर्निंग द डिक्रीज इन इंटेंसिटी फर्स्ट इज द ओरिजिनल इंटेंसिटी ऑफ द सोल्यूशन and secondly it is dependent on the concentration of the solution i will try to explain this with a simple example if initial intensity is 10 and final intensity is 9 so it means that decrease in intensity is 1 unit if you increase the initial intensity to 100 the final intensity will become 90 so that the decrease in intensity will become 10 if you increase the initial intensity once again to 1000 the final intensity will become 900 and the decrease in intensity is 100 what is the meaning of this beer's law it says that whatever is the decrease is directly proportional to intensity of the incident radiation so if you increase the initial intensity the decrease also goes on increasing this is the fundamental concept of beer's law okay now yes now how to detect the intensity is another problem because once it passes through the solution you have to detect the intensity and detection of the intensity is done by the detector okay so first 
there should be a source then there is a sample cell then there has to be a detector which will detect and the detection is now we have to determine the intensity of light now intensity of light is not an absolute property like the weight or mass or volume it cannot be one liter intensity or one kilo intensity the intensity has to be converted into some electrical signal like current and the function of detector is to convert this intensity into current so to generate the current which is proportional to intensity a cell or a detector called as a photocell is used where the incident light incidents on the detector and it generates or emits the electrons which are collected by the collector and thus if you increase the intensity the current flowing through these two cells or these two electrodes will go on increasing so i have current intensity ratio or current intensity variation with increase in intensity the current goes on increasing okay so this is all about the concept now on the basis of this concept how the instrument will look like the instrument will contain a source of radiation which will have a, a radiation in the desired range of the spectrum like visible light or uv light then there will be a slit to give a sharp beam of light from here passing through this then there will be a lens lens to get all the radiations which are parallel to each other so parallel radiations are obtained okay and this light is polychromatic light but for beer's law we want monochromatic light so we have or we want a filter or a grating to get a monochromatic light then the radiation will pass through the cuvette and then it will incident on the photocell and whatever reading is obtained will be obtained in the form of a output so this is the logic behind development of instrument called as a colorimeter this is how the colorimeter has developed based on the requirement what is the requirement as per beer's law we want a source we want a monochromator we want a sample cell and we want a detector so these are the four components and based on these components these two instruments named as colorimeter and spectrophotometer have been developed okay uh, we are not going into the electronic components of this instrument but the logic behind development of these instrument i have explained you okay this is about a colorimeter or spectrophotometer now we come to another concept of what is called as a conductometer one more instrument now it is based on the measurement of conductance the conductance of a solution will depend on two factors the first factor is number of ions present in the solution and second it will depend on the mobility of the ions present in the solution more is the number of ions more will be the conductance of the solution conductance is nothing but the current carrying capacity of a solution and this conductance is inversely proportional to resistance of any species or any substance so if the resistance goes on increasing conductance goes on decreasing or if the resistance goes on decreasing conductance goes on increasing so they are inversely proportional to each other and the conductance of a solution depends on how many ions are present and what is the mobility or what is the speed of motion of the ions now when i say number of ions i am talking about quantitative analysis and when i am talking about mobility of the ion depending on every ion they will have different mobilities and so i am talking about a qualitative analysis and hence this conductometric techniques can be used for quantitative analysis as well as qualitative analysis if we can determine the conductance of a solution we can see or we can say which ions are present and how many ions are present both of them can be determined this is fundamental concept of conductometry so this is fundamental principle now for development of instrument what i want to have i want to determine conductance of a solution 
now how to measure the conductance of the solution now for that conductance can never be measured directly it has to be measured in terms of resistance so what we do is we take two platinum electrodes or platinum plates and we supply ac current to this and when we supply ac potential or when you apply ac potential what we call as vac applied potential ac potential then depending on the number of ions and mobility of the ions the current will go on changing okay so i can record how much current is flowing through the system so now i know the current i know the applied potential and we know what is the beer's law sorry what is the ohms law ohms law states that the resistance is the ratio of applied potential and current and from this we can calculate the resistance of the solution and from the resistance of the solution we can calculate conductance because conductance is a reciprocal of the resistance now from the conductance we can determine how many ions are present and which ions are present this can be determined indirectly so what instrumentation is required just we want a instrument which will measure the resistance of the solution because once we know the resistance we can calculate the conductance and conductivity okay now your syllabus in practicals is confined to only conductometric titrations now we know that conductance depends on number of ions and mobility of the ions consider a titration where you are titrating hcl solution a simple given hcl solution and you are titrating it with standard noh solution a simple acid based titration now in this titration if we see that initially solution contains hcl now hcl is a strong electrolyte which will dissociate completely and it will give you h positive ions and cl negative ions now h positive ions have got a very high mobility they are the fastest moving ions in the solution and since they have got very high mobility their conductance is very high so initially the solution conductance will be very high but when you go on adding naoh to the solution the hcl ion or hcl in the solution will react with naoh undergo neutralization giving you nacl and h2o if we see this carefully you will find that what is the net effect the chloride ions are still there as it is but h plus ions will be replaced by na positive ions and na positive ions are less mobile and so the conductance of the solution will go on continuously decreasing with addition of noh and this will happen up to the end point till all the hcl in the solution is consumed now when all the hcl is consumed whatever noh you are adding will remain unreacted and this noh will lead to formation of new ions na positive and oh negative ions and oh minus ions are the second fastest moving ions after h plus it means that they are having very high mobility and hence the conductance is high and it will go on increasing after the end point so in short we can say that initially the conductance is high because of h plus ions during titration conductance goes on decreasing due to replacement of h positive ions with na positive ions and after end point the conductance will go on increasing due to addition of oh minus ions okay and hence we can say that this type of titration curve will be obtained with initial decrease in concentration as decrease in conductance and increase in conductance after the end point if you extrapolate these two lines they intersect and the intersection leads to the actual end point of the titration or what we call as a uh, equivalence point of the titration this is about conductometric titration this is a instrument called as a conductometer what is it is having it is having a conductivity cell and this cell has got two electrodes these electrodes are platinum plates and the function of this instrument is to measure basically resistance 
and convert it into the corresponding value of conductance. This is the logic behind the instrument called as a conductometer. One more instrument uh, I will be discussing is the potentiometry or potentiometer. Now, what is a potentiometer? So basically, it is based on the measurement of EMF of the solution. Now, what is the EMF? <clears throat> EMF is the electromotive force. Electromotive force is nothing but the potential difference or potential generated when the current flowing through the system is equal to zero. And this EMF is governed by again the number of ions and the nature of ions and the relation between the EMF and the concentration is given by this equation called as the Nernst equation E equal to E0 minus 0 0.0591 upon N is the number of electrons involved in the redox reaction into log of concentration of product upon the reactor. So it is C. If you see this carefully, you will find that this EMF is governed by two factors. One, this is a concentration factor and second, it is fixed factor. This fixed factor is dependent on the nature of the ions which are present and concentration is based on the number of ions which are present in the solution. It means that potentiometry can be used for again the qualitative and quantitative analysis and for measurement of potential or EMF, you want two electrodes one is a reference electrode, <clears throat> second is an indicator electrode and they are dipped in the solution of analyte which you want to analyze and what we are measuring is the EMF in the millivolts. So this EMF is governed by the concentrations and from the EMF you are determining the concentrations. When you come to potentiometric titration similar to conductometric titration, again if we consider the same titration of HCl with an OH, we will find that initially the solution contains H plus ion, after endpoint it contains OH minus ions and hence the EMF goes on varying either in this particular fashion or in this particular fashion depending on which indicator electrode you are using. If you are using a glass electrode as an indicator electrode, you will get this type of curve. If you are using a queen hydrogen electrode as an electrode, then uh, you will get this type of curve. This is a point at which the slope of the curve is maximum will be taken as a equivalence point and the volume at this point is the end point of the titration. Similarly, in this particular graph, this is the end point of the titration. So, this is how the logic of analytical chemistry is developed based on the very fundamental principles of concentration and mobility or EMF. This is an instrument called as a potentiometer, which involves two electrodes. One is a reference electrode, one is an indicator electrode, and we measure the EMF between these two electrodes. When I say EMF, it means that the current flowing through this particular system is a zero. <clears throat> that is called as when the current is non-zero, we call it as a voltage. And when the current is zero, we call it as an EMF. Okay. I think this is all about the fundamentals and the time allotted to me was exactly 45 minutes and I think I have summed up within 45 minutes. This was just an introduction to how the concept of instrument is developed. I have not discussed any instrumentation but it was only the logic behind the instrumentation. In the end, I thank the principal, Dr. Dhumne sir, my best friend, Sham Dafre sir from the department, Professor Tiwari sir, all the IQC members, all the staff members. Uh, again, I am dedicating this lecture to the memories of uh, our beloved Borkar sir. Thank you. Thank you students. Thank you very much. If any questions are there, they are always welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, any queries regarding uh, the topic are uh, welcome. Very much sorry to interrupt you. Tiwari uh, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Okay, okay, sir. Just I, uh, I want to say some few words uh, for my friend Dr. Gigade. Sir, uh, although the time was very short, uh, because I know that you are also having some another lectures.
11 am onwards uh, but uh, i don't know about my student but i am not satisfied with this 45 minutes so uh, it's it, it, it's my request that we will continue this uh, uh, analytical instrumentation uh, this lecture series uh, yeah, with your kind permission we will have another uh, lecture also uh, uh, after deepavali no problem at all sir uh, we can have a specific topic lecture so that see yeah, it's a general lecture so and so i have given just a glimpse of what uh, instrumentation is uh, so we can have a few more no problem at all sir thank you very much yes uh, dr tiwari you may continue uh, thank you very much sir uh thank you very much uh, dr r m jugade sir for such a wonderful and uh, informative presentation highlighting the principle and uh, working of uh, analytical instruments in a very simple and lucid manner thank you very much sir now i invite dr ajay ghatole sir to propose vote of thanks Tiwari sir, uh, I think there is a problem with uh, Gatwa sir. Yes, sir. Audio problem is there, sir. Yeah. Hello, Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Now it is audible, Now sir. Audible. Hello. Now it is audible, sir. Audible. Yes, it is audible. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tiwari. Sir. Thank you, Tiwari, sir. Uh, one uh, good morning to everyone present, present, present here. Respected dignitaries, dear invitees, dear, invitees, dear, colleagues, dear colleagues, and dear students. Dear students. Today, Today, we are, we are much, delighted much delighted to have a great, have a great session on session instrumentation, on instrumentation in, analytical in analytical chemistry, chemistry. A, logical a logical approach. approach. Organized, organized by, by Department, Department of Chemistry, of Chemistry under DBT Star College, Star College Jain Patel College, Khandara. I hope you all have all really have enjoyed, enjoyed the lecture, the lecture under the gracious presence of our of resource our person, Dr. R.M. Dugatis. Professor, Professor, Department, Department of, of Chemistry, Rashtra Santa Tukuruji Maharaj, Nagpur University, Nagpur. At the concluding part of this guest lecture, on the on behalf of organizing committee, I, Dr. Ajay M. Bhattade, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, would like to express my gratitude towards our esteemed guest who joined us in spite of his busy schedule. We express special thanks to Dr. R. M. Jugade, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude towards Honorable Principal Dr. V. P. Dhomne, sir, who is always a source of inspiration and motivation for us. Thank you, sir. I am thankful to Dr. S. W. Duffre, sir, Coordinator, DBT Star College, for his hardship and cooperation. Thank you, sir. I am also thankful to all my dear students who rise the beauty of the program and make the make it sensible thank you i am thankful to all my colleagues shri vayu rathod sir dr gb tiwari sir dr s u jhanje sir and dr tadvi madam thank you thank you all on the half of the organization organizing committee i declare here is the end of the program thank you all thank you very much Thank you, sir. Dafre, sir, can we close it now? Yes, yes. Ha, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jugadesh.